Hello once again everybody. Welcome to part 7 of my FE exam preparatory series. In this part I'm going to go over the things you need to do to get ready for the mathematics questions that you'll be presented with. Keep in mind that any discipline that you happen to be taking will include some level of mathematics, some more than others, but you need to prepare in any case. It's one of the critical parts. Once again, if you find this video useful or you get anything at all that you find helpful out of it, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would be very helpful in allowing me to present videos like this in the future. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm showing here is the current agenda for the series. This is now part seven and it's video number 11 because I've taken multiple videos for some of the previous parts, in particular the calculator. Going forward, as per the current plan, we just got three more parts to cover. So where do we start with the mathematics questions? The first place to start is the NCEES website. You should make sure you pull down the exam specification for the test or test, if you're considering more than one, from their website. On the screen here, I have the link to where you would go. And all seven of the FE exams that they currently offer each have a PDF file that shows you what we call the specification, which I mentioned earlier in the program, telling you what sections there are and what types of topics to expect. Things to consider. Depending on which discipline you happen to be taking, the purely mathematics FE questions themselves represent between 5 and 15 percent of the questions you'll be presented. Now, it'll vary by the discipline, but it'll also vary by the test, because they're constantly picking questions from a database for each test for each quarter that the tests are offered. Also, the mathematics concepts and formulas that you'll use in studying for these problems will also be useful in as many as 50% of the other exam questions. Most anything to do with engineering has some level of mathematics involved in it. Just solving the formula in most cases is something that you'll have to consider. Understanding how to use the NCEES FE reference manual is very critical to success on these exam questions. What you see up here is a chart. Uh, I didn't cover all seven disciplines. I covered the most common three, electrical, mechanical, and civil. And I've covered the topics that I thought applied most to all of these particular disciplines. And it will show you which FE exam covers which topic. As you can see, the electrical exam is by far the one that covers the most topics. But mechanical is not far behind, and civil is right in there as well. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to go over pretty much most of these sections. I probably won't get to the discrete mathematics because that's really only used in the electrical test. The first topic I'd like to talk about is analytical geometry. Now this topic includes areas, areas of shapes, geometric shapes, volumes of three-dimensional shapes, straight lines, the distance between points in space, conic sections, which are usually three-dimensional as well, although there's special cases that are not, spheres and quadratic shapes, and then solid angles. So this topic includes all of those subtopics. The strategy that I suggest for attacking this section is be aware that nearly every problem will be using radian angles. So make sure your calculator is set by default to radian, not degrees. And do not overthink these problems. They tend to lean towards problems requiring two different calculations, such as determining an angle from a conic area, then using that angle to find a circumference of a circle that it might be attached to. So you usually have to do two calculations to solve the problem. If the test were to ask for you to just calculate one of those, it really wouldn't live up to the spirit of an FE type question. So focus and do one step at a time. Calculus, a very important topic. The subtopics include derivatives, critical points, partial derivatives, curvature, gradient, divergence, and curl, limits, integrals, and centroids and moments of inertia. Some strategy suggestion. Spend some study time on your old high school limit theory and calculations. I know that was tough in high school, but it's one of those things that leads into calculus and is very critical to understanding the concepts behind it. Make sure you understand what dy over dx versus du over dz represents. You have to really look into that one because the formulas that they give you in the formula sheet on the FE reference manual expects you to know those. Take as many free online math courses as your study time permits. 
You'll see a section at the end of this video where I show you two of the ones that I found most helpful. Partial derivatives are very complex. Maybe you should consider this topic as sacrificial, something I described earlier in the series. Because if you haven't taken differential equations, you'll find that extremely difficult. Curvature, gradient, divergence, and curl are calculus three topics. Spend time trying to review, but if, you're com if that's completely foreign to you, consider making these type C study topics as I described earlier in the program. Integrals are inverse derivatives. You need to study the formula tables for both the derivatives and integrals at the same time. They basically are inverses of each other. Some problems will call integrals as reverse derivatives and vice versa, so be ready for that. Centroids and moments of inertia are doable as long as you spend the time studying the basic concepts. Differential equations. The subtopics here include basic differential equations, linear homogeneous differential equations is one major category with constant coefficients, and linear non-homogeneous differential equations is the other, also with constant coefficients. Differential equations is not a topic you should take casually. It is extremely complex. So if you haven't taken differential equations in school, bachelor's or graduate, then you really have a lot of study practice to do on this topic. As I'll describe later though, the basic differential equations are something that is quite learnable as long as you understand basic mathematical concepts. You just have to spend the time to do it and understand those concepts very carefully. Some suggested strategies. Learning basic differential equations is very doable, as I just said, even if you never took a course in it. Note if you happen to be using a PPI study manual. I found multiple errors on the pages related to differential equations. They were corrected in errata sheets on the PPI website. So I suggest one of the first things you do, either before you start that or second time you go through it, go out to their website and get that errata sheet and write in the corrections. Very important. Make sure you fully understand and practice calculating the R variable. And you may see it sometimes as R squared, but you may be asked questions that then ask for the square root of that or just the R. So be ready for that. Transforms and convolutions, surprisingly not emphasized in the NCEES specification sheets for any of the ones I looked at. The subtopics include Fourier transforms, Laplace transforms, Z transforms, and convolutions. Some strategy suggestions. Well, I've already hinted at this with the basic differential equations. If you've never taken a differential equations course as part of your college education, be aware. Learning what to do with basic differential equations, that is doable, as I said before. However, learning Fourier or Laplace transforms is geometrically more difficult to do. You really have to put a lot of effort in there and you really have to be good at calculus level mathematics. Just to let you know, I actually walked in to the FE exam with the strategy to sacrifice the transformation problems to gain more time for other more doable problems. And I think I wound up just trying to solve one and then I gave up every time I saw one that looked similar. And that did help me. That helped me be more effective with the overall time for the test. Linear algebra. The subtopics here include matrices, simultaneous equations in matrix form, and then solving simultaneous equations using the Kramer's rule. This topic I found is extremely doable. The calculator comes in very handily. Suggested strategy. Go to the calculator as much as possible. Do not, however, waste your time trying to use it for a 4x4 or even higher matrix. These are usually simpler and doable because they make them a little bit easier to do when they're that wide in dimensions. So as long as you know the concept, you should be able to solve this on paper. Be prepared for a problem that is purely variables, where you will need to show how each element is calculated. So do study the concept here. Don't totally rely on the calculator. There is a little bit of that in the reference manual, but it's generally not enough. You really have to understand it walking in. And this is an important topic within the math category. Simultaneous equations in matrix form are very straightforward. I found those very easy to study and quite easy to do overall. The Kramer's rule is worth understanding and practicing it. 
I won't say one way or the other if that showed up on my test, but I do suggest that you study it. Vector analysis. Well, similar to matrix. The topics include vectors and vector identities. The strategy for this is just as with matrices. Go to the calculator almost always. Study the vector identities and unit vectors. These identities are very important to understand. Now they are listed in the reference manual, but you have to understand how they represent them in that manual. You will likely see vectors and problems combined with other calculations, such as matrices or trig or something like that. So be ready for that. Number systems and Boolean algebra. These are two other topics left out of the FE specifications, surprisingly. And that should not have been, because these are important. Whether or not you're doing electrical and computer engineering, but very important if you're taking that particular FE exam. The subtopics include binary, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal numbers, conversions from one number system to another. What are complements? and the applications of those complements, for example, negative numbers, and the computer internal representation of these numbers. Boolean variables, identities, laws, and De Morgan's theory. De Morgan's theory is critical. It's referenced in the reference manual, but you have to understand how they represent it. Sometimes those formulas they give you are not represented the way a textbook would represent them, or even the PPI manual. And then, of course, logic gates. Suggested strategy, these are A topics for electrical and computer. So if you're, you're taking that one, make sure you study this topic well. Other math topics to study, basic algebra. Make sure you refresh your knowledge of logarithms and log identities, very important, log identities in particular. Spend some serious time on polar coordinates, especially if you're taking the electrical and computers, but it is also somewhat important to anybody taking the mechanical engineering FE exam. Do you know what the polynomial triangle is? If not, make sure you do. Trigonometry. Refresh or study your knowledge of the trig identities. This is high school math, 11th grade mostly, but it gets refreshed in calculus level for a semester. So it's important as a lead in to a lot of other math topics. And also, don't forget the hyperbolic trig functions. A little bit different, but you need to understand them and how to read those formulas in the reference manual. A general strategy. Make sure you fully understand how to use your calculator on the types of math problems your FE exam includes. Then practice, practice, practice. Every practice problem in math will increase your capability and more importantly, your confidence in solving those types of problems. Now for some suggested web resources to study math. These resources, by the way, are very abundant on the internet. So other than the ones that I've used, there are others that some other individuals have had success with. The two, however, that I've listed here, Khan Academy and Math Tutor UK, I spent a lot of time with and learned a lot from. So let me go ahead now and show you exactly what they look like. Okay, here's the website for Khan Academy. There are a lot of topics here, not just math. There is even topics on specific technical and engineering topics as well. So I would suggest that you do spend some time possibly going through this for some of the other material. How you use it? You come up here into the search and type in what you want to learn. Calculus, for example. You type that in, hit the search, and pops up Calculus 1. That's one of many topics. You can see on the screen here they also have differential equations and other types of topics related to it integral calculus. Let's just open up calculus one as an example. So in calculus one, you have many different subtopics to go over. And what you'll find here is that a lot of these have videos to them. So for example, if we click on the meaning of derivatives in context, I am provided with links to videos. Now I'm not going to spend much time here because I don't want to get any problems with YouTube, but it will actually open up a video for them and actually produce the actual lesson in a small video session for you. I have the sound turned off right now. Let me close this up. The other one that I want to really talk about as well is the Math Tutor UK. Here is the Math Tutor UK website. 
I found this extremely helpful and spent many, many hours in here studying and refreshing some of these concepts that I had not taken in 25 years. So for example, if you want to pick a topic like differentiation, click on the little button here. It gives you all of these subtopics. So let's say I want to pick the quotient rule. Click on this little link here and it gives me a lot of choices. I can look at the text related to the lesson. I can do a diagnostic test. There are some exercises as well, but I really want the video. So let me click on that. and you will actually see a legitimate lesson presented to you. Again, I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube, so I will stop this right now. Okay, that covers the topics that I wanted to cover in this lesson. The next lesson, part eight, will cover engineering economics, a very, very important topic, just about as important as the math. So please tune in. Okay, everybody, thanks again for watching my video, and hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, please consider subscribing so that you can see future videos much easier. All you have to do to subscribe is click on my little head here, follow the instructions, and that'll help me tremendously. I'll be able to produce more videos in the future on topics that are important to everybody. Thanks again, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.